Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. First of all, Everything in the market, guys. Remember this, and this is a this is a great this is always a great question, um, and it's usually asked by um, traders who've been trading less than three years. Um, they'll look at level two, and and say, "Oh my God, Dan, there's a huge seller, right? There's a huge seller at the price." And usually, huge sellers are there at whole numbers. Uh, whole numbers is the area where personally I probably 99% of every tra single trade I take is going to be at a whole number just because uh, you're looking for liquidity uh, most especially retail right most retail uh, retail fund managers retail uh, index funds retail as you can see the word retail is used a few times but the majority if you're a swing trade and you have a, you have an active swing or just a, or, or um, exposure to the market if you're buying stock or selling the stock long term, you're not going to turn around and say, "Well, I want to sell the stock 5839." You're either going to strike, right, guys? You're either going to take, you're either going to sell the stock at 58, or you're going to sell the stock at 59. How many of you guys are going to turn around unless you're specifically day trading and we see a supply zone at 5839? If you're swinging the stock, you've been holding the stock for five months, right? You're not going to wake up to, and say and say and turn around today and say, "Look, I want to sell the stock." You're not going to turn around and say, I want to sell it at 58.39, right? You're either going to sell it at 58, or you're going to sell it at 59. And what happens is when you're actively day trading the market, you're actively trading the market in general, you're going to look at your level two and you're going to look at your level two and you're going to see buyers and sellers, right? Uh, the, highest, uh, the highest offer, uh, excuse me, the highest bid and the lowest offer, right? That's your, uh, that's your level two. And you're going to run into something called uh, the reload seller. And have you guys noticed, um, have you guys noticed there could be, let's just use, there could be 40,000 offered. Let's just use the number 58 bucks, right? So 40,000 offered at 58 and a huge volume surge comes in, right? And they lift all that stock at 58, leaving one guy there with 100 shares. Have you guys noticed that? Right, guys? All of a sudden, all this massive volume comes in, right, guys? All this massive, type, type, type a one in the channel. Have you guys noticed that? A, a massive volume surge comes in. They take the whole stock, right? They take the whole offer. And then all of a sudden, some guy is just sitting there literally with 100 shares left, right? That's called the reload seller, okay? Um, if you guys notice on every one of your platforms, you should have one, uh, one of your trading platforms, you should have uh, an area on your platform when you're buying or selling a security that you can hide your order, right? On the bottom, of, it doesn't make a difference what platform you have. Every platform, at least in this day and age, should have it. Um, you should have something called showing or visible, right? Something or any, anything in that, uh, in that area. So basically, if I have, I'm just using any number. So if I'm a fund and I have 1 million shares for sale, Okay, if I'm David Einhorn and David Einhorn turns around and says, you know what, let me sell 500,000 shares of Tesla. Or I'll give you a better example, a real life example. If you guys remember two weeks ago, there was a pivot on Tesla, right? There was a pivot on Tesla at 715. You guys remember that? Right? 715, 715. You guys remember that? 715, 715. And do you guys remember who was selling stock? Every single day that email went out, Kathy Wood, right, sold gazillion shares. Of, how, she must have sold what? Three million, four million shares of Tesla during that time. Apparently, we knew who the reload seller was. So every single time Tesla would get to that 715 level and needed to confirm, right, guess what happened? The macro seller came in, the reload seller came in, and no matter how much stock they took off that offer at 715, let's just call it she would not move, right? She would not move. And she's showing 500 shares at a time, but yet she's selling millions and millions of shares. So when you're looking at level two, and we know this because we know the importance 
of getting into these pivots, right? We know the importance of getting into these pivots and how important those price levels are. We know that if there's a reload seller in the market and he's not moving, okay, that means he has a lot more shares to sell. And the one thing that when you run into a reload seller, I don't care how good the stock looks. It could be, it could be Tesla on Monday going through this number here, right? And we all know what the number is here, okay? If they don't move, if you see hundreds of thousands of shares moving and the stock doesn't appreciate within 30, 40 seconds, you know there's a seller in the crowd. There, there is no, you know, there is no mystery why the person is not, you know, it, the stock is not rising. If there's a technical level, okay, stock, again, guys, there is no manipulation, okay? There is no boogeyman. There is no, you know, secret society, okay? Buyers clean up sellers, the stock goes higher. Sellers clean up buyers, the stock goes lower. That's it. There is, I, I give you my word, I'm doing this for 22 years. There is no boogeyman pulling the rope, okay? So get this whole, you know, thought process out of your head. The markets, there's no ma manipulation in the market. There's technology, right? There is technology, okay? There is technology, that allows you, which is a black box, gray box, blue box, whatever, blue balls, whatever you want to call it, okay? There is quants, there is algorithms that are taking advantage of price action, but they are buyers and sellers too. They need money in their accounts to do exactly the same thing. They just do it faster. So you could be running into an algorithm, okay? But the algorithm needs to be financially backed, okay? There is no such thing as an algorithm without money. So no matter if it's a reload seller via algorithm, a, VO, VO, uh, uh, a seller manually, okay, if they can't reclaim, if they can't clean up those sellers at that price and you don't see the stock moving over the number or over the price that they keep on taking stock, you know that's your first, second, and 12th clue. There's a reload seller, you know, there's a reload seller in the crowd. Now you have two choices, right? You have two choices. You can sit there, sit there until the cows home, come home and clear out, you know, and have them clear out the seller and wait till finally the stock goes higher. Guess what? We don't know how much stock the person has for sale. He might have 50,000 for sale. He might have 5 million for sale. And the last thing you want, okay, especially if you're a newer trader, uh, if you're a newer trader with risk tolerance, okay, the last thing you want to be, quote unquote, is in God's hands and guessing. Because guess what's going to wind up happening? After they first, you know, they're cleaning them up for two, three minutes and the guy's not moving, people are going to finally turn around and go, yep, there's a reload seller in the crowd. Let me get out. Now, imagine all those people who bought that stock at the same time and turning around and saying, you know what? There's a reload seller in the crowd. He's not moving. Let's all get out at once. Right? The stock's not going to come in 20, 30 cents. The stock's going to come in two, three, four dollars a share. So you have two, realistically, you have two courses of action. You can sit there in God's hands, praying to God, saying, please, God, let this guy move. Please, God, let this guy move. You could do that, right? But that's not a proactive thing. You, you're, 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 a, you're a victim at that point. You're in God's hand. You're a victim. You always want to, we preach control. Right, guys? We preach control. We're not looking to be right. We're looking to be, you know, we're looking to be smart. We're looking to be adults. We're looking to put ourselves in a position of strength. And sometimes being in a position of strength means that if you're holding aces, you got to muck that hand. That's just the reality. Sometimes you have a great hand and you're about to play a great hand, but that person is not moving. And guess what? You can get out of the trade, right? You can literally get out of the trade, get a paper cut, right? Little paper cut loss, get out of the trade. And once they finally clean them up, you can always get back in. Guys, this is not real estate that you buy it and hope for a buyer five months, six months, a year, your property's on the market. This is the stock market. You could get in and out, right? In and out very, very quickly, especially with names like Tesla and Facebook and Apple, uh, you know, and everything in between. So the last thing you want to do is be a victim, be in the market God's hands. We don't know how much stock the guy is for sale, but the easiest way uh, to, to, the easiest way to spot a reload seller is if you are entering a trade, you have monster volume come in on the offer and just the guy doesn't want to move. 
right? He just does not want to move. That's your first sign. Hey, look, something's about to happen here. I don't want to be a victim. I want to stay in control and I could always re-enter my position. Does it really matter? Because Jay, think about it. Does it really matter when you're trading Tesla, right? Does it make a difference if you're along at 805 or 806? Honestly, if the stock is going to 830 and they're betting 830, 850, 860, 900 calls, does it really make a difference? Get out of the trade, right? Get out of the trade. Absolutely. Get out of the trade. Take a, you know, take a 10, 15 cent loss. Who cares, right? It's the cost of doing business. Once the guy gets, you know, once the guy is completely, completely um, removed, gets cleaned up, then you're going to see appreciation in the stock. So yeah, that's the easiest way. Uh, that's the easiest way to um, to um, uh, to kind of to kind of you know to kind of uh, remove yourself from being a victim of um, for being a victim of um, um, a reload sell. Right. So that's that.